Hello, everyone. Again, welcome back to PLG Disrupts Day 2. And we have the third talk because we had two parallel sessions before. And we are so proud and happy to welcome Ismail Madni, the Head of Pricing Strategy at Okta. Welcome, Ismail. Thank you so much for having me. I'm uh, very excited, humbled, and honored to be here. I want to thank uh, the product uh, hub and this conference for inviting me. This is uh, just a very unique opportunity. So thank you for having me today. Thank you so much. So Ismail Madni will talk uh, about PLG go to market transformation for the enterprise. And basically he will talk about what we do we have to do in order to shift the direction of a traditional organization into digital tr transformation and adopt product led growth. So Ismail, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Again, I'm very excited to be here. I am uh, located in Raleigh, North Carolina, so on the east coast of the United States. I grew up in Washington, D.C. and have been down here the past five years. It's a great town. Uh, nearby, you're probably familiar with Pendo. Pendo is located in Raleigh. There are many other tech companies around here. Citrix has a very large presence here. Qualtrics has a large presence here as well. Uh, it's an exciting time uh, to be in Raleigh and a very exciting time in the product-led growth space as well. So I want to thank everyone again for allowing me to be here today. Um, again, my name is Ismail Madney. I'm the head of pricing at Okta. I've been with Okta since March of this year uh, and have been in pricing for 15 years now. I cannot believe this. Uh, I have uh, been a go-to-market professional in that same time, pricing and go-to-market, and now product all ties so closely together. So this is a very unique time for people like myself and many other pricing practitioners uh, in, our, uh, in the SaaS space. My career has included stops at such startups as Envision, the design tool, you may be familiar, uh, was recently there, a very product-led growth company. I spent a little time at Auth0 as well, uh, another company that's very much focused on product-led growth. I spent time at Massive Enterprises. I did um, multi-billion dollar deals at AT&T, for example, and my real entrance into SaaS uh, were at multi-product companies. First, the go-to products. So if you're familiar with GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar, GoToAssist, uh, and then part of the team that merged with LogMeIn in 2017. So products such as LastPass and LogMeIn Pro, LogMeIn Central. Those are all products I've had the opportunity to uh, work on. In addition, I've had the chance to uh, provide uh, startup advice uh, as well. I've worked with uh, quite a few startups the last few years on their pricing strategy and on their go-to-market strategy. Uh, most recently with Grain, uh, you're about to see them come out of beta if you're familiar with the user research tool, Grain. I've been lucky enough as well to work on freemium products, e-commerce products, large enterprise deals. Uh, it's been a very unique career to get here. And again, I feel very lucky uh, to be a part of this. The conversation I'll have today with you isn't just about PLG. I think we all here know the concepts of product-led growth. We understand where the market is going. You're now familiar with the model, you're familiar with how it works. Um, but one of the interesting things and in, when I was asked to do this talk is, how do you get a large enterprise sales motion, a company that is tops down, sells in the boardroom, sells to the C-suite uh, to shift? How do you shift the model upside down? Large enterprises are comfortable selling here. You can see it, it's the boardroom, you close the deal. It's, your, it's what the sales guy loves to get involved with. They, they, they wanna be closers. Um, this is where they're comfortable. This was the traditional way of selling software before product-led growth came along. In lo many large enterprises, this is still the de facto method. Uh, you look at Oracle as an example, it is still a very heavy, large enterprise sales team focused on relationships, focused on getting uh, the right people in the room together. You know, this involves account-based marketing. This uh, involves trade shows. This involves drinks at the bar, relationships. This, this involves having a sales rep call his uh, EVP or SVP or even the CEO of the company who will then call their friend um, at the prospect account, who is the COO, and say, hey, went to college together, just closed this deal, or we worked together at this other company, let's, let's do business together, buy my software. 
That's been the traditional model, and that's still how many large enterprises sell. But as everyone here knows, how we go to market is changing, uh, which is why we're all here at this conference, which is why we're all practitioners. So what I'm talking about is the best practice is to go from selling here in the boardroom and the C-suite to earning users here. And I'm, I'm using the, that term earning users. Uh, it is very critical. We all know just how critical the end user experience is in product-led growth. And it's not just about selling to them. It's not just about marketing to them, but it's actually about earning them. And this is something that enterprises are starting to catch on to, but it takes a dramatic shift to get them there. Again, more and more software is free for end users. I can name, you know, Coda, Notion, um, even the, some, you know, LastPass as an example, Zoom for certain, uh, Slack. Uh, you can use products for free forever, uh, depending on what you do or you don't. It's in each space. In uh, development, your developers have a whole host of free tools now. Designers have free tools. Collaboration software is free um, all over the place. Again, video conferencing, project management. There are multiple free options in every single space. And in order for product-led growth to work, you have to earn users and earn fans. So again, enterprises don't always intuitively think this way. Why, why waste our time on free users? Why are we putting so much product development in the free experience? So how on earth are we gonna get enterprises to shift from winning business in the boardroom to earning business where they are? The enterprise is starting to discover experience. I think we, we're starting to see that more and more. Um, it's primarily still been done via acquisition. A few years ago, SAP acquired Qualtrics. SAP is a large traditional enterprise company, acquired Qualtrics, which has some product-led growth principles. Their pricing and monetization model is, believe it or not, based on product-led growth. There is still, it's not the pure self-service model yet. Uh, there's a couple other interesting examples we've seen recently. You know, a, a, the media headlines, you know, but it isn't in, as interesting as Oracle. You know, we saw Oracle go after TikTok. Why? I mean, did they even legitimately go after? I think there's still questions to be answered. As I mentioned, Oracle is the definition of a large enterprise selling to the C-suite. Why would they acquire a stake in TikTok of all products? You know, what, what are they focused on there? And again, did they actually acquire it? Another good example recently was Microsoft acquiring GitHub. I think this was a major shift for Microsoft. Uh, we can all agree. Over the last few years, we have seen Microsoft make a shift into thinking about that end user experience, into thinking about product-led growth. Um, it didn't seem obvious, but this was the moment where us in the market started to think, oh my goodness, uh, Microsoft is actually serious about this. They're serious about getting into product-led growth. They've acquired GitHub and open source software focused on developers. Um, we all are now starting to see that this was a play to earn the trust of developers. This is a play to earn the trust of end users. Again, as an example of that, they were so serious that recently this year, GitHub is now free for teams, not just the individual user, but it is now free for teams. In general, we know and, and we see the principles of product-led growth, especially with monetization of allow the free end user to use it for free as much as they want. As soon as they start collaborating or doing things, maybe a few people, maybe they're now a legitimate business. You know, that's the way I think about it when uh, I talk internally at Okta about product-led growth, what's the shift from individual to using this product with others, that's when we start to monetize. That's when folks like myself or pricing professionals think about, well, what can we charge and what is the value, you know, first, what is the value that our users are getting for the team and the collaboration aspect? Microsoft said, hey, if you're a free user or you're a small team, 
GitHub is free. That is a, you know, a, an amazing shift at Microsoft considering the type of company they have been uh, in terms of compliance and their model in general and just how they've pivoted to being truly about uh, product-led growth. They're literally willing to give away that team market where there's potentially millions of dollars uh, available. However, the whole point of this is not every large enterprise can acquire GitHub. Let's, let's be honest, Microsoft was able to spend seven and a half billion dollars, which helped accelerate uh, their transformation from just purely enterprise selling E5 licenses, you know, the term license still exists out there, to uh, giving away a very valuable product for free to teams. Not every major organization has this ability to do that. So how does a sales-led large enterprise transition to product-led growth. So this is happening here at Okta. Believe it or not, we are still not a traditional product-led growth company. Um, we have for years been built on some principles of it, a great product, a great product experience, great user experience, and there's some virality with it but not in the way of your typical product-led company. Um, this tweet here was really interesting to me. Uh, and again, I know what's happening in the background here. There's not too much I can share internally yet, but this was one of the few public items indicating a shift in the mentality here at Okta. Um, a few months ago, our leaders, you know, 25 top leaders in the company, uh, essentially were forced to go through onboarding and usability testing of one of our flagship products. It was incredibly painful. I cannot tell folks just how painful the experience was, um, just how the reaction from our chief product officer, our chief marketing officer, that they could not get themselves anywhere within our product on their own. They could not experience the value of our product on their own. They were, they were baffled. Um, it, it was really interesting to see it internally. And I give Todd a lot of credit for actually tweeting this out, for saying to the entire world, hey, we internally did a usability test with our executives and it was a flop and this is a problem. Um, so this is only a part of uh, Octa's journey. And if you look at Okta's career page, if you go to it right now, you're sitting at your computer, uh, look at the product management roles, look at the engineering roles. It's very clear that we're putting in more and more efforts into our end user developer experience. But that's only a little part of the Okta-led journey. We are still very much a sales-led company, um, big enterprise deals. If you look at any of our financial statements, uh, if you look at any of our earnings calls, you'll hear us talk about six-figure deals and the big deals we're, we're landing. And I can't say too much more about where we're going, but there's a shift in mentality occurring here. And what are the things that I've encouraged and some of the best practices we're starting to develop to make this? Um, that is what I can talk about here. You know, there's some very key best practices to get there. Uh, and these are just a couple of the areas that I want to focus on for the rest of my time here about really shifting to product-led growth. Um, these are core areas large enterprises need to get right in order to set in motion the practices of getting there. Uh, and that is define your user. Believe it or not, large enterprises, if you were to sit in a room and ask folks, who is your user? Tell me, who is the end user of your product? It's IT. It's uh, the security team. No, no, no. Who is the user? The, uh, just getting clarity around the user is a challenge. And that is the first step. Uh, for one of our products, we have made a clear definition of the user, um, and that is the developer. It, it took some time to get there, but it, it's very clear the developer is one of our users, and that's in the focus area. And then the next thing is actually learning everything about that user and getting the organization to actually learn everything about the user. 
uh, again, here at Okta, there is a major focus on research around the developers occurring right now. Um, and that is something that needs to be a part of the transformation, not only defining the user, but knowing everything, developing that intimacy, getting the data right. Believe it or not, this is incredibly challenging for large organizations. Even bringing up the term PQL is not uh, an easy thing uh, to bring up. So beginning that transformation. And I think the most important thing is to bring your sales team along. Uh, when sales thinks about product-led growth, they're thinking, oh my gosh, you're going to give away our product for free. You're going to go down market. You're going to start to kill our ability to charge more prices and be more transparent. Am I going to make money? There are many challenges sales has, and it's critical to bring them along. So first, talking about the user, you cannot transfer or tra excuse me, transform yourself from selling to the C-suite to product-led growth unless you can actually define and say who your end user is. This really is the, in my opinion, the critical foundation and the best practice. Again, we can take a look at these product-led growth companies here every single PLG can define their end user. Every single company I'm showing you here, Shopify, Dropbox, Twilio, Slack, Zoom, Atlassian, can make a clear definition of the end user. Um, you know, they include the developer, the project manager, an internal employee, the entrepreneur building an online store. Um, many enterprises, as I stated before, cannot do this. So again, this step one is bringing leadership to the table and asking who is our user and just asking that simple question. I've asked that in many meetings of our leadership since coming on board for, you know, challenge your product team with it when you're in those sessions to just start with who is the user. It's a powerful question. Uh, it's one that without clarity, you're going to fall apart. Uh, and it leads to even more questions and more opportunities. You know, it's not just about the buyer, but again, ask that question, who is the user? And give examples of companies like I am right now saying, hey, I can name the end user of these companies. Who is our user? Very simple question. Next, learn about your user. I know it's cheesy at times to come up with the persona and talk about their needs and wants and what they need to get out of the product. I know at times I've rolled my eyes at this exercise, but it is so critical to truly transforming to product-led growth, to getting the enterprise to shift. Because if you can't define and learn everything about the user, you can't gain that intimacy with the user you're not building for the user. You're not giving them an experience that will earn them. And eventually you're not gonna be able to give sales what they need to be able to sell them higher paid plans, to get them out of maybe your free plan or your very cheap self-service plan into some enterprise plan. You have to have to learn everything about the user. I'll give you one example. When I was at Envision recently, um, I didn't know anything about designers. And this is, again, a product-led growth company uh, at its core. I actually spent a week with a design agency here in Raleigh, sitting with them, sitting in their meetings, seeing the tools they used, learning their workflow. I'm not a PM. I'm not an engineer. I'm not building anything for them. But I could not truly do my job without understanding them. Here at Okta, we're having sessions with developers. You know, I'm once again sitting with developers. Our leaders are sitting with your individual contributor, junior developer, not just a senior architect or a chief architect, someone who might be two years out of school or just out of a boot camp. You need to develop that intimacy with your end user, learning everything about them to the point where Something like this that you see on the screen now, you know, with Jane Doe, the UX designer, 
you understand cold. And not only do you as one of the product-led practitioners understand inside and out, but your organization understands. Everyone at your organization at the end should be able to have memorized this about the end user. Um, and again, it is about bringing up not just the first question that I said, how do you, you know, define the user? Who is the user? But let's talk about everything about the user. Who are they? What are their challenges? What do they need? What are the problems they need solved? What is their job to be done? What are we offering them to do that? And are they willing to pay for it? These are some of the questions that absolutely need to be asked over and over. You'll notice again, this is so much about asking questions internally. Who is the user? What do we need to know about the user? Next, the data truly matters. Um, I, I say this as someone who is not a data scientist, but I love data. Uh, I, you know, tend to, again, you know, I'll use the word intimacy. I get intimate with the data. I, I love to, you know, just sit there and run various analysis and look in our Tableau dashboard then as, as an example. But your sales-led organization is not optimized from a data perspective to be product-led. Um, I've seen it myself, and I promise that your large enterprise, you are not either. Again, on the left is your traditional funnel, you know, your marketing qualified leads. And you start with the lead, but that starts with your awareness, which starts with campaigns and billboards and commercials. Uh, eventually, you have a lead, which is then a marketing qualified lead, the MQL, passed off to sales. Now it's a SQL, it's in Salesforce in stage two or stage three, um, you know, as a, now an opportunity. And after four months, you finally close them. Um, after an expensive sales cycle, after pre-sales, after sales engineers, after your VP of sales gets involved, it's a big enough deal getting the CEO involved. Of course, in product-led growth, we flip it on its head again, and we introduce the PQL. And this is, once again, a a byproduct of asking the right questions of your stakeholders and of your leadership. Now, well, how do we define a lead in this new world of self-service? What is that? It's, it's a product qualified lead. And it's a product qualified lead because of the actions they're taking, because of what the user is doing, um, because of the experience they're having. And then it turns into an opportunity, then into a customer and then eventually you're able to upsell them. So let's take a look at some of the metrics we need. Again, this has been, you know, even at a um, company like I'm at at Octa, very forward thinking, just getting the metrics right is not the easiest thing. Getting everyone to understand what are the actual metrics, believe it or not, uh, are a major challenge. And this is again where one, being able to define them, and two, being able to give relevance, and then three, actually using resources from other companies. The social proof really matters in getting your leadership and getting the right folks on board to redefine the data. Um, again, believe it or not, some of these metrics, the largest, best enterprises in the world with significant market caps just do not understand. Um, I think the most challenging is time to value. Um, how long does it take that user to get real value? What is the aha moment? That's what I'd like to say. I remember at Authzer, we talked about that aha moment. What does that mean? Thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not just kicking the tires. I'm not just window shopping, but I'm getting value out of the product. Uh, the PQL, this is not the easiest thing for an executive team or you know even mid-level folks who've been in enterprise to understand, which is who actually enjoys using the product. Even at a product-led growth company, it was difficult to get our uh, sales team to understand. At Envision, and there's you know, some things we propose where it's like, hey, by the time it gets to the sales team, they're going to be a PQL. They're going to already have loved the product. Uh, so it's an easy sale. You know, you're turning into order takers. 
average revenue per user, or I even say average revenue per account, depending on your product. Uh, this to me is a critical, critical measure of, you know, what you're actually monetizing. And it it's a proxy to me as well of the user experience. Uh, customer lifetime value, very obvious. You want to be able to cohort and put together what the customer lifetime value is uh, for your now product-led growth users and eventually your large enterprise users as well. Once again, it's another metric that tends to be overlooked, surprisingly. Expansion revenue, I think that's very obvious. How much money, how much additional incremental money are you getting out of your already monetized users? It's important to see that going up and to the right. And then virality. I think um, I remember the first time I heard a virality and the viral coefficient, and I kind of rolled my eyes, but it's critical and it's critical to measure that. That in theory, a product led you know, growth focus will have a viral impact. Um, you will just see usage explode as more and more users are adopting the product. Um, I put a link in my deck to ProfitWell. You know, they've got great resources on this. Uh, there are many other sites around. I highly recommend when you start to take this conversation to your leaders, to your company, to your leadership, to actually cite other resources. Um, one of the questions that I get, uh, not only at Okta, but at some of the startups I worked at or other large companies is, how do other companies do this? So the social proof matters here. And yes, your sales team will love product-led growth. There is this perception that they won't. Uh, there's this perception, again, that certain sales folks um, will hate it because now they can't monetize, they can't make money. Oh, you're giving away too much of the product. We can't do that. Um, we're going we're gonna to churn. This is not only a battle you have with your sales team, also your finance team. Finance teams hate the concept of product-led growth. They cannot believe they're giving away something for free. Uh, you know, they want to know the cost of what it is. Oh, you're going to kill our margin. Oh, there's this perception that every large six-figure enterprise is going to downgrade into a free plan all of a sudden. That's not true. And that's why it's important to bring them along for the journey. Again, a couple reasons why it, it's great for sales. You really need to talk about with your sales team in the beginning of your transformation, just how the top of the funnel will expand. Uh, some of the slides I show our leadership emphasize top of the funnel. We will have more leads. Our strategy is to expand the top of the funnel. This is also great because those window shoppers who may call into sales, you know, they now have been weeded out. They're not using the product. Yeah, they signed up, um, but they're no longer using it. You know, I, God knows how many free products I've signed up for that I just don't use whatsoever. Um, but I love trying different products. And there's many folks out there like myself who really enjoy that process. Your leads will now understand the product. You are no longer as a sales rep actually selling the product. You are selling the relationship, you're selling the overall solution. You know, whatever, when I talk to our sales team, I try and get them out of the, oh, we have feature X and feature Y conversation and into, this is the value of your relationship with Okta. Um, so with product-led growth, leads will already understand the product and sales can sell on value, not on features and not on, you know, most importantly, not on price as well. In a nutshell, more leads, serious leads, and leads who already know and love your product. So bringing along the sales team is critical, and these are some areas how you can do it and get them to actually buy it. So I know this was short, but in summary, some of the best practices and some of the things we're doing here at Okta and that I've had the chance to participate in at other companies as well. Start by defining your user. Just ask that simple question. Who is our user? Challenge your product teams, challenge your marketing teams, challenge your sales teams, even challenge your finance and operations teams. Who's our user? And keep the focus there. Develop intimacy with that user. That's a very specific word I'm using. You must have 
deep user intimacy and empathy. Um, and you need to get the entire company to do that. You need to, again, once you've defined the user and you've done some of the research, start asking questions of everyone in your organization. Hey, tell me about our user. What do they like? What do they need? And keep this top of mind for everyone and continue that research. Um, don't stop with it. And the data matters. Your company, if it is a large enterprise, is not thinking about their data in a product-led growth way. Use social proof. Show what other companies are doing. There are so many resources now on the data you need for product-led growth. Put it in your documents. Just take screenshots and link your, the other blogs that are talking about this. There's a true science and methodology to it, and this is foundational. And lastly, get your sales team involved get them involved early. They need to be a part of the discussion as you, you know, the idea is in its inception phase. The idea is just brainstorming. You want your sales leaders involved. You want their contribution. You want their feedback. You want them to understand why this will benefit them. Um, and if you get your sales team involved, your transformation will be even more successful and you'll be able to drive it faster and faster. At Okta, this has been probably the best part of our experience so far. Our sales team is all in on this. There's no doubt from them about what's going to happen as we transform into a truly product-led growth company. Uh, and they're, they're extremely excited about that opportunity. That's why we're able to do this. I want to thank you. I know there's questions coming up. Um, I've left my contact information, so please connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I love talking about this, obviously, and uh, you may email me directly. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Ismail. So I have indeed questions. Thank you so much for your presentation. The first question is, what are the most critical qualities of the end users when a PLG go-to-market strategy is at play? What would you monitor per customer segment to be exact? I think it depends on the product. Um, one, like I said, I want to make sure that the end user is defined. That's number one. Who is it? Um, once you have actually defined that end user, you can then determine what is the most important characteristics for that end user. Depending on the product, it could be how often do they share a wireframe? How often do they share a prototype in, in the design space? Um, it, with you know products such as Slack or collaborative tools, it's again based on share. How many people are invited? How many are you sharing? With some developer tools, it might be how many actions are they they taking in your product? Not just the very basic. Are they starting to take other actions within your product mm -hmm. uh, to find value? So it really depends on the user and the product. Okay, I have another question. Um, do you think that sales teams will make the transition to a product-led sales model within the next few years? That user experience is actually becoming a critical indicator for them? Absolutely, um, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why. Because it is much, much easier to sell the relationship, the brand, the company, versus getting into a feature discussion. Versus getting into, oh, we have feature X, Y, and Z, and yeah, you know, our competitor doesn't. Um, that mm -hmm. doesn't help. You're no longer selling against the competition. You are selling the relationship and the positive benefits of becoming ingrained with your company. Um, mm -hmm. I really believe sales, as they see this more and more and see the success that Zoom is having. Zoom folks, and granted, you know, it's a, a very interesting environment, which is why Zoom is doing as well it is, as it is. They've turned into order takers, uh, the sales reps there, right? Like everyone at the, every, AE at that company has met their quota for this year. And again, unique environment, but um, Slack with their model, uh, they've been doing really well with their sales team. Um, other sales teams will start to see the benefits of, hey, I don't have to sell the product or sell the features. The leads are coming to me, already fans of the product. It turns into mm -hmm. order taking. Okay, and the last question. So in summary, to sum up, any major learnings in PLG transformation that you've acquired from Okta's PLG transformation? Um, again, the the last, the the first and the last part, defining the user, that's critical. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Without that, 
it doesn't matter. You must define yeah. and hone in on that user and then bring the sales team along. I cannot tell you how much easier this has been here with our folk, with our sales team really wanting this, with our sales team really driving this. Um, they are a part of every discussion and we've made significant progress already. Those are the two mm. key things that I would say, if you get that right, you're gonna succeed. Mm, super. Thank you so much for your answers, for your presentation. Very insightful. And we really hope that we see you in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me today. It was a pleasure. Bye bye. Bye. So stay with us. In just a few minutes, we'll join again with a very special guest from Cognizant. So stay tuned. <laughs>